All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Which takes us to this question, Dave. Keaton Slovis now official at BYU. Let's rewind a little bit to the moment you found out and your initial reaction to Keaton Slovis signing to be the next BYU quarterback and run Aaron Roderick's offense under head coach Kalani Satake. Well, looking at what they have coming with the Big 12, uh, my first thought was, here's an experienced guy that's been there and done it before, which makes him the biggest asset in the locker room out of anyone. He doesn't even have a locker yet, and he's the biggest asset in the BYU locker room because he's been there and done that. He's, he's played 34 P5 opponents. Jaron Hall's played 11, which is the most in school history, and he did it over two years. Slovis played 10 last year and 34 in his career, and he's done pretty well, and, uh, and I like what Aaron Roderick does with quarterbacks. Absolutely. I can't help but think just how many people were involved in this process. And I'm going to go back to a conversation I had with our good friend John Beck before the Stanford game when he, without telling me who it was, alluded to a big-time name in the transfer portal that is potentially looking at BYU. And Keaton Slovis has had a relationship with John Beck for coming up on a couple of years now. And because of Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall and, you know, Keaton finding out why those guys took the next step and wanting to know who helped them. And it was John Beck. So when John Beck first presented the idea of a, of a big name, you know, my mind just was racing. I was like, who could it be? I'm thinking of all these guys and a bunch of people had, you know, had started to throw their names into the portal at that time. Slovis was not a name that popped into my mind until I saw that name from Pittsburgh show up in the portal. I thought, maybe, maybe it's that guy. But would Keaton Slovis, the guy who was so public about his experience at BYU, being heckled by sober fans. Saying, Slovis, you stink. Would, would he come <laughs> to BYU? And the answer, obviously, is yes. And clearly, when, I, when you piece it together, you think, okay, he wanted to work with John Beck. He wanted to get in an offense that's really going to display his talents because he wants to take the jump from college football into the NFL. This decision, make no mistake about it, is clearly so that Keaton Slovis can make the trampoline jump to the NFL and follow suit of Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall in an A-Rod offense to get to the NFL. He's got NFL dreams. Well, he go, lives it. He, this is what his life is. And you go to college to get a job. He went to college to get a job in the NFL, and, uh, and he believes BYU is the best spot for him for his last year to do that, to get him ready. Did Jaron Hall recruit him to BYU? We're going to ask, ask Slovis that here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, he was fantastic as a freshman, uh, freshman offensive player of the year, right, in the Pac-12, threw for a bazillion yards. He had some injuries. USC went through some changes. They fired their coach two games into Slovis' junior season. Uh, and then Lincoln Riley's hired. He's bringing his quarterback. So Jackson Dart goes to Ole Miss, and, uh, and Keaton Slovis goes to Pittsburgh. And, and that's kind of why there's been movement around. And, and this is his third school in three years. But, but under those circumstances, um, this isn't a problem child going and creating one problem after another. This is a legitimate six foot three quarterback who's got a big arm. And, uh, and, and with Aaron Roderick's creativity and Epps and Hall and Roberts and Rex and company, you know, the sky's the limit for what BYU can do. They now have a Big 12 offense moving into the Big 12. Now, people are going to point to, well, his numbers kind of tapered off after that spectacular yeah. freshman season at USC. And we're going to talk about his injury-riddled pass as well. His arm was not right for a couple of years, had some surgeries to get that right. He feels 100%, says he's 100%. And Aaron Roderick puts his quarterbacks through some very, very stringent tests. And everybody talks about the, the rollout across the body throw that Zach Wilson made in pro day. Like, that is a, a typical, you have to be able to make that type of throw if you're going to be the quarterback in an Aaron Roderick offense. And you got to be able to roll and, you know, go to the opposite hash and throw it 35 yards across the field, that yeah. impossible angle with the arm strength necessary to do that. Those are the types of things that Aaron Roderick wants and needs his quarterback to do in the BYU offense. Keaton Slovis can make all those throws. His surgically repaired shoulder can make all of those throws. Also, I know some fans are hesitant because they look at a guy like Charlie Brewer who left Baylor and went to Utah. It did not work out. And he was benched for Cam Rising. And then he ended up at Liberty. And so some fans are saying, 
Well, is Keaton Slovis just the next Charlie Brewer, or is he more like Bo Nix, who went from Auburn to Oregon and lifted Oregon's program back up? We're all hoping that it's more of a Bo Nix situation, but just talk to him for a minute, and it's hard not to feel like, okay, he's seen a lot of Power 5 games, and you wrote yeah. a fantastic article on that, uh, available, on, uh, and you tweeted it out, about just everything that he has seen and the experience he's gathered there. I, I, I don't think Keaton Slovis is is a Charlie Brewer type. I feel like Keaton Slovis, I'm not saying he's Bo Nix either, but I, I feel like he's going to elevate BYU's program. Well, and he's come to a program that throws the football. And Charlie Brewer went to a, a, a university that runs the football and that wanted to all of a sudden start throwing the football, and it, it, it didn't work. Um, BYU loved it. BYU loved the Brewer was in there because they dominated him when they beat the Utes there two years ago. But, uh, but, but Slovis comes to an offense that, that, hey, this is what we are. We're not going to create our offense to fit you. We want you to fit into our offense. And, and so there's no mystery about what plays are going to be run and, and how often he's going to throw and, and, and how often they're going to be committed to the run. And I think that's big. This is the most important decision that Kalani Sataki's had to make as a football coach. Who's going to be the quarterback to lead BYU into the Big 12? Yeah. Uh, and it can't be anyone on the current staff. They just don't have the experience yet. So you're losing Jaron Hall. You can't blow this one. This has to be the biggest choice, and it has to be successful. And so as they fished around, they found Slovis. They did their homework. Slovis has done his homework, and now, now we'll see. We'll get them on the field together and see if this is a match. And if it is, BYU now becomes a contender in the upper half of the Big 12, not just a player in the bottom of the half. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, how much of an impact do BYU fans expect Keaton Slovis to make in the win-loss column? Because the... I'm hesitant to go there a little bit because BYU is yeah. making the Power 5 jump, and I had kind of settled on, hey, just win six games next year, you know, beat Sam Houston, take care of Southern Utah, Hope and, for the best. and win four games, <laughs> go six and six, call it good. Keaton Slovis, to me, makes BYU a win or two better, and everything on top of that, to me, is gravy. But to your point. Maybe, maybe an eight-win season, but an eight-win season puts you in the upper half. Awesome. Absolutely. Like, yeah. he, he takes BYU from ah, hopeful for six wins. Yeah, they can win six games. Now we're talking like, okay, maybe BYU is an eight-win team, and, and then we, we kind of go from there. And then let BYU fans put on the blue goggles and, and see where it, it takes them in their wildest dreams. Uh, I love his confidence. As a freshman at USC, he plays UCLA in-town rival in L.A., throws for 515 yards and four touchdowns. Not everybody gets to do that. That is still in him. You know, you don't lose that. Uh, now he's just older, more experienced. That experience is the golden ticket uh, for, for a BYU quarterback to lead them into a place where no one's ever sure. been. And he's taken over for a guy, and you've pointed out, Jaron has accomplished so many things. Jaron Hall will take the greatest winning percentage against Power 5 opponents of any BYU quarterback and, and that'll probably be his legacy forever. Um, I think he's still 11 games. It might be 12. I think he's 8-4 and four against Power 5 opponents. That, what other BYU quarterback has done that? None. Ty Detmer was 3-9-1 and one against Jim Power McMahon, 5 opponents. Jim McMahon, one, they didn't get those opportunities. No. And so you don't know what, but, but they, didn't. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't play that kind of a schedule. Even the great Taysom Hill, 8-8. Eight and eight. He was 500 in 16 Power 5 games, Dave. Jaron Hall, 8-4. and four. Like, so Keaton Slovis, he himself has got some big shoes to fill as Hall now heads on to the NFL. The Slovis interview is just moments away. Let's go. It's Let's go. Be good, good stuff. All right, so who's he going to throw to? Puka Nakua is going into the, <laughs> into the, into the draft. We, you know what? Everybody expected that. Um, there was probably more intrigue that Hall might come back because we heard rumblings this was a tough decision, this and that. Uh, but with Puka, we just kind of expected him to jump in there. So he's in there. And then you turn around and you see Keanu Hill, mm -hmm. Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, a healthier Isaac Rex coming in. Uh, and then all of a sudden you've got a, you have a Big 12 first string arsenal to go into that league. Well, and th this type of decision of Keaton Slovis picking BYU only helps Fessy Satake go out and recruit maybe a Juco wide receiver who's you know, three or four star talent. Or a portal guy. And yeah. a couple of four star portal guys mm -hmm. who are interested in BYU. Like when you're getting an arm and not just any arm, arm talent that has NFL aspirations and he's on NFL draft radar, you're gonna bring in some receivers. So as much as it hurts to lose Puka, special, special player. 
Had he played as many games as Austin Colley and been as healthy as Colley, now maybe we're having a real conversation about, okay, he's in the GOAT conversation when it comes to greatest BYU receivers of all time. He just didn't have his the, the right. continuity, didn't have as many games. But when he was, was on the field, Dave, oh, my gosh, spectacular player. Like just his energy is infectious. He always seemed to make some ridiculously awesome play. But now he's gone. And so, to your point, there's a good core there. They're going to need some other pieces. Fessy Satake will need to and is working currently on adding some additional pieces. They need depth. Absolutely. They've got the first wave, but as being an independent for 12 years yes. is top BYU, there has to be a second and even a third wave sure. of top-tier talent. Well, and you know what BYU fans are going to love about Keaton Slovis? He attacks the middle of the field. Jaron Hall was so good at attacking the edges, right? The middle of the field and the tight ends were not his forte, per se. Not that he couldn't do it, not his forte. He was so good on the edges and kind of extending plays with his feet and whatnot. Slovis is surgical, and he will attack the middle of the field, and that is fantastic news for the Rex family, specifically Byron and, and, and it's Isaac. It's interesting. There was some buzz that maybe Isaac was going to go out because, you know, his numbers this season and last season pale in comparison to his numbers with Zach Wilson sure. when he scored 12 touchdowns and, and led the country. Um, but then uh, about a week ago, he pops in with a tweet going, hey, we're running it back one more time, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, I wonder huh. if he knows something. Huh. Maybe he did know something. <laughs> uh, he knew that an attacker of the middle of the field was coming. Uh, and I think that's might be the, he might be the biggest winner in the whole receiving core coming back uh, as to what Slovis can bring to this offense. Sure. Well, and then you look at the running backs room, it's like, Okay, well, who does Keaton Slovis have to help him out a little bit to take some pressure off of that right arm? He's got Aiden Robbins, transfer from Louisville and UNLV. He will join the show tomorrow. So we're just doing debut interviews as we yeah, come back from Christmas break. It's Keaton Slovis today, Aiden Robbins tomorrow. you got to give the people what they want. Yes. Robbins and then Mason Wake also put out on social media yesterday or a couple of days ago. It's all mixed. It's ha things are happening so fast that he, too, is running it back for BYU. He said, I can't miss it on the Big So 12. I got friends in Vegas, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. they love this Robbins kid. And they were surprised he left because th th there was a coaching change. Yeah. But uh, Bobby Petrino is coming in as the offensive coordinator at, at UNLV. Why would a player leave that type of an offense? Um, but he did because he wanted to play at BYU. At 6'3", 230 pounds, I've seen the videotape of him, and I've talked to guys who've talked to him. And uh, th th that's a big one for BYU. There's great potential in Robbins at running back. Yeah, and, and I've had some people say, is this Chris Brooks part two yeah. in Aiden Robbins? Similar physical build. Robbins is a little bit taller, but as far as, like, just stature, th they're very similar in build. I straight up asked a couple of people on the staff, okay, Aiden Robbins, Chris Brooks, how do they compare? And they feel like Robbins runs a little bit lower, shoulder pad level a little bit lower, and is a little bit more physical, and similar top end speed once you break out in the open. Um, and Chris Brooks had some injuries, and BYU had trouble getting tough yards in the trenches. They feel like Aiden Robbins is gonna be an upgrade in that regard. Yeah. And that's not, this is not to knock Chris Brooks. This is just to say BYU coaches feel like the tough yards in tough situations, third and short, fourth and short, they have now a little bit better of a situation with Robbins there as the physical back. You know what we're going to ask him tomorrow? Are you going to make BYU better? We'll see what he says. Yeah. But we think he is. Are you going to get a first down on fourth and a half yard? Yeah. <laughs> and are you going to run straight ahead and not sideways? <laughs> oh, now that's more on the offense. That's not on the running back. Call the plays that send the guy running forward. For sure.